Hey guys, welcome to Startup Bits. Amazon's history is certainly colorful and fraught with controversy. Nonetheless, it's one of the most famous corporate success stories about how tenacity over all circumstances and continuing on the key route are the only ways to turn vision into reality. On July 5th, 1994, Jeff Bezos founded the company as an online bookshop, but the company has since evolved to sell practically anything imaginable and is now one of the most valuable firms in the world. To help you comprehend the multi-billion dollar business and how it has changed through time, we've created this video in which we will explore the history and how it has become one of the world's largest corporations. But first, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. History Amazon officially launches as an online bookseller on July 16, 1995. Within a month, the new merchant had shipped books to all 50 states as well as 45 countries. Founder Jeff Bezos' philosophy was grow big fast, and the Seattle-based company grew into an e-commerce behemoth, offering everything from groceries to furniture to live ladybugs and helping to transform the way people shop. Bezos graduated from Princeton University in 1986 with a bachelor's degree in computer science and electrical engineering and subsequently worked in the financial services industry in New York City. He traveled to Washington State and started the company in 1994 after seeing the business potential of the internet and calculating that books may sell well online. After someone misheard the term cadabra as in abracadabra, Bezos decided to rename his startup Amazon after the massive river in South America, a title he believed would not limit him to selling only one type of goods or service. Bezos asked a small group of friends and former co-workers to test a beta version of Amazon's website in the spring of 1995, and the first ever order was placed on April 3, 1995, for a scientific book titled Fluid Concepts and Creative Analogies. When the company's website went public in July 1995, the company boldly marketed itself as Earth's biggest bookshop, despite the fact that sales were initially fueled mainly by word of mouth and Bezos aided with order assembly and driving parcels to the post office. By the end of 1996, Bezos' company had generated $15.7 million in revenue, and in 1997, Bezos took the firm public with a $54 million initial public offering. That same year, Bezos personally delivered his company's one millionth order to a customer in Japan who had ordered a Windows NT handbook and a biography of Princess Diana. Amazon began selling music CDs in 1998, and by the following year, it had expanded into new product categories such as toys, electronics, and tools. The company had shipped 20 million items to 150 countries around the world by December 1999. Bezos was named Time Magazine's Person of the Year the following month. In the year 2000, the company launched a service that allowed individual sellers and other outside merchants to sell alongside them. Amazon's own products. Meanwhile, Jeff's company continued to invest extensively in expansion, and it didn't turn a profit until 2003. They launched their Kindle e-reader in 2007. Four years later, the business stated that it was selling more e-books than print books. Amazon's tablet computer, the Kindle Fire, was also released in 2011. The company launched a cloud computing and video on-demand service in 2006 a film and television series development studio in 2010, and an online marketplace for fine art in 2013, which has featured original works by artists such as Claude Monet and Norman Rockwell. They also bought a number of businesses, including Zappos and Whole Foods. Amazon beat Walmart as the world's most valuable retailer in 2015. Market capitalization was $250 billion two decades after its founding with Bezos still at the helm. Bezos was ranked the world's richest man in 2017. Bezos stepped down as CEO of Amazon on July 5, 2021 to focus on his aerospace firm, Blue Origin. The corporation has recently come under fire for terrible working conditions and exploitative behavior at its fulfillment facilities and warehouses. How did Amazon handle the dot-com bust? History does not always point to having the best concept or the most astute management. To a great extent, Amazon was fortunate in that it raised a substantial sum of money just before the market crashed, providing the company with the necessary buffer to weather the early 2000s instability. 
it's a good reminder that the fate of high-flying, money-losing firms like Uber or Snap may be determined as much by chance as by the CEO's talent. Early in 2000, Warren Jensen, the company's new financially conservative CFO from Delta and GE's NBC division, believed the company required a stronger cash position to protect itself against anxious suppliers demanding faster payment. Amazon sold $672 million in convertible notes in February, after Ruth Porat, co-head of Morgan Stanley's Global Technology Unit, advised him to do so. With the stock market moving and the global economy in crises, fundraising was not as simple as it once was. Jeff had to offer a far more lenient 6.9% interest rate and flexible conversion terms. The deal was completed a month before the stock market crash, which made raising funds extremely difficult. Without that cushion, Amazon would almost certainly have gone bankrupt the next year. Many would compare Amazon to other dot-com era disasters, such as Webvan, Cosmo, and Pets.com, if Bezos and his team had waited a few weeks longer to acquire those extra funds. Surprisingly, most of what eventually made Amazon successful was invented only after the dot-com bust. Bezos, for example, has attempted to foster creativity within organization by dividing the firm into two pizza teams, groups small enough to be fed with two pizzas, that operated autonomously and were held accountable for the results. Stone claims that he just communicated his plans in 2002. Recession of 2008 Despite the recession, Amazon's profits increased astounded financial specialists. Profits of $199 million, or 119 million pounds, for the latest three months astounded Wall Street experts, up 68% from the same period last year. Sales increased by 25% to $5.45 billion, or 3.27 billion British pounds. By September 30th, the Seattle-based firm was expecting to make $5 billion. According to CEO Jeff Bezos, Amazon's Kindle electronic book reader is a core of the Seattle-based company's strategy. Kindle is the best-selling item on Amazon.com in terms of unit sales and cash, he said. International sales now account for 48% of the company's revenue, a figure that would have been higher if not for currency fluctuations. These figures are expected to rise now that organization is selling the Kindle globally. Foreign Kindle sales have been so strong that the company has reduced the price from $279, or 167 British pounds, before tax to $259, or 156 British pounds, the same as the US-only edition. Future Nowadays, it appears that Amazon has firmly established itself at the top, and exclusively digital purchasing is here to stay. With such a large market share and profit margin, where will they expand next? Jeff is preparing to open a new location. Amazon Go stores have opened in Chicago and New York, allowing customers to scan their membership cards to get access. They can take anything off the shelf and leave without paying. Only a few stores provide this type of shopping. More Amazon Go locations, including airports and tourist attractions, will be added by 2023. So this was everything about the origins of Amazon, how it thrived, where it stands today, and where it is headed in the future. If you liked our video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll catch you in the next one.